<laughs> but uh, you know, the, 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 the town crier decided that they were going to uh, build a new venue where Pete lived in, in Beacon, Pete Seeger lived. So they, they opened a brand new venue and somebody sank a lot of money, some, a lot of their folk money into it. And, uh, they spent, and, and it's just an incredible place, really beautiful place. And you walk in the door and there's a huge painting of Pete Seeger on the wall. I mean, they really wanted to honor Pete, who deserved it. You know, he busted his ass all his life, making good things happen. And uh, he didn't make as much money from the folk realm as we were able to. <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, so we were, we were asked to open the town crier, you know, so just by ourselves, you know. And it sold out and it was looking really good and we were excited about the gig. And the night before we opened it, I mean, the afternoon before we opened it, I was sitting down in the basement working on some stuff that we might do for the show. And I just got this really strong whim. I would say it's kind of the ghost talking to me, but, uh, you know, get up and go to this particular place in town, this restaurant in town, which I don't like to go out and hang out in restaurants much. I'm not, don't like that much. But I felt this really strong urge. So, and Tink walked down the basement right at the top, you know, down where the studio is, and she said, hey, let's go get something to eat. And I said, yeah, I just got this kind of revelation to go out to the foundry to, to, to get something to eat. She goes, oh, they're, they're, they're closing now. They're closing. I said, well, call them and see if they'll stay open just to make us some sandwiches, because I feel a really strong urge to go to the foundry. So, we, we, you know, she called them, and they said, oh, yeah, we'll make you some sandwiches to go. So we walked down to the foundry. And they had the rope across the door. It was all closed up and it was empty. And they lifted the rope and said, come on and sit down while we make the sandwiches. And we walked in and no one was in there except Pete Seeger. And Pete was sitting in there. He was on the phone. And he was, you know, talking pretty intensely to somebody. And, and we could tell something was up. So we were sitting there waiting for the sandwiches. And uh, we started, when the sandwiches came, we started eating them because Pete was still on the phone. And we realized... He needed a ride home. He was trying to get a ride home. So uh, when he got off the phone, we said, Hey, Pete, we'll drive you home. We can take you home. He, like I said, he was up the road from us. And uh, Pete, who, you know, who, who always saw through the fact that we were not a folk band, like I told you, <laughs> he sat there. He said, Hey, can I sit and eat with you? So we sat down and we ate together at that table. And we ate there. It was really nice. Then we took him home. And then he said, You know, we were going to just drop him off at his driveway. He said, Hey, come up the, come up the mountain, Beacon Mountain. And come see the house that Toshi and I built, the first place we built. So we took us up to the log cabin that him and Toshi had built, you know. And uh, then he took us to the main house and he invited us in and he talked to us for about four hours about everything in the universe. We, uh, like two months ago. Yeah. Yeah, it was really, uh, it was just an amazing, he, he didn't sit down the whole time, he leaned against the chair. And we were just standing like really close to each other. It really felt very familial, you know. And and we were asking him questions about his ancestry and stuff. Where did they come from? What you know? What created this icon? You know. Where, and so he was telling us where the lineages came from, the mayhem, and what they did, and all this stuff in great detail. And we were just trying to get into the vibe of him and like kind of breathe him, you know, a little bit. And we went back and forth on a lot of things. We talked about a lot of spiritual points and pragmatic points and. It was quite uh, a blessing to spend that much time with him. And then um, uh, we, we asked him a question. We, we said, hey, Pete, so, and he talks about the history of everything. You know, he's very versed, and he deals with a lot of frequencies of things, you know. Uh, and uh, we said, hey, so, so, Pete, you know, all this is going on so far, so what is it we should do now? <laughs> well, what's the next step? And he said, my favorite quote is a quote from a mathematician who taught my elder brother. He said, he, he said that that mathematician said that the eternal present is the most important time in history because anything you do within this moment affects, reverberates and affects everything around it. Even the past gets adjusted by what you do now. So he said if you really just focus on doing your best within the moment, it'll change everything in every direction. So that's what he said. I thought that was pretty cool. You know? So, uh, and our next album was called The Eternal Present.